did you guys come last year, or is this the first? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're kind of trying it out. I, they're trying to get some craft companies. Uh, more Great. Than, you know, so, so. Yeah, they definitely were um, doing yeah. that. Oh, did okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, uh. <laughs> Spokesperson, which actually is not a thing anymore. I'm, it predates influencer, um, and have you know worked with hundreds of companies over over the course of my career. And my favorite thing in the world is to partner with other creatives um, to cross promote and really infuse each other's personality. So, and that is at the very heart of what influencers are. So, um, I want to ask you all a question, but first I want to introduce everybody. We've got Sarah Zimmerman who. You will know as repeat, repeat crafter me on the interwebs. Thank yeah. you. Oh, I like that there's like a. Oh, yeah, I, have, I, have, I got some friends in there. Yeah, in the so, audience. so uh, designer and influencers. Then we have Amy Smart, diary of a quilter, um, <laughs> teacher, designer, all those things. Oh, and then representing um, our businesses, we've got Taylor Palacio from Physics. And then we've got Tom Schaub from uh, Deco Art. So we are going to be fully covered today. So welcome, everyone. Welcome. Um, before we get started, I we want to get a little bit of feel of who we're talking to, so that we can make sure to give you get for you to get out of this what we um, hope. So how many of you here are companies who are looking to connect with influencers? Oh, okay. And then how many of you are potentially creatives, creators who are interested in hooking up with. OK, so it's about a 60-40. So we're going to just cover it all then. Yeah. OK, good. So I wanted to start, um, I, I mentioned a little bit that there was, there definitely has been a shift over the past definitely five years, but probably decade, in how creators are used. First of all, creator was not a term when I started it. Blogger was the big hot and heavy term, and that was new too. So it's really evolved now that everybody has cameras in their pocket and computers in their pocket. It's a completely new world. So I'm guessing that it has also changed a lot from hiring one spokesperson, you know, like the name in the industry, to working with many to fill this like insatiable um, content monster that there is. So I'd like to start with Taylor and Tom, whoever wants to take it, both of you. If you would talk a little bit over the, about the course of, you know, let's just say five years, just to keep it nice and tight, how, what you've looked for in relationships with, with creative types, with artists, um, has changed from five years ago to today. Taylor, do you want to start? Um, yeah, so I think probably five years ago, we were looking for a lot more of like a longer term relationship, um, something that was the content took longer to create, right? So we were looking at things that were maybe even still print at the time, or like blogs, like you mentioned, things that took, right. that were longer to curate. Um, and as we come to present day, they're very quick things, um, very you know short form videos, very quick makes. Um, the attention span of the consumer is a lot smaller. Um, so that that's the biggest thing. So now, um, even though we, it, we do have long-term relationships still, but we're also looking for even quick little design teams for three months at a time or six months at a time or something like that that can turn onto a trend, um, not as many you know, long-term things. So that's the biggest thing for me, I think. So that's interesting because I would have, it would be easier <laughs> for everyone involved if you had a long-term relationship, but you just had the, the type of deliverables changed. So 
But you, what I'm hearing from you is that you need to splash so many different tiny ponds yeah. that for you it makes sense to almost consider it like a collection. Right, and we, we do, collection. yeah. It's, yeah. it's almost like a, when you release a collection of products. Like you have a collection of influencers that match that collection of products. We absolutely still have long-term relationships. It's just more of a mix, whereas before it was all of the long-term relationships. Right. Tom, what about deco art? Yeah, um, you know, I've noticed in the last, uh, in that five-year span, um, you know, there seems to be more specializing in, in the platforms that we're working with for different influencers. So, you know, we've kind of been sensitive to that. Um, in the past, you know, like you said, Blogger uh, was the big push for us when we got really involved in that, you know, 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, so I've noticed a lot of specialization, and and it depends on product and um, you know who we're looking to, to partner with, and of course their um, their reach and everything is important as well. But you know I'd say that this that you can tell specialization of, of some of the folks that are out there and and where we're looking to get our message out, and we'll we'll reach out to that that yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we start, can you can you all hear? Okay, good, because I can barely hear you from okay. the side. Oh. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear it. More important than you hear it than me. Um, it was brilliant, whatever I said. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I got, I got it, and, and um, I want to, I want to dig in deeper. But before we do that, I want to talk. You can't hear. Can, can you, can we pump it up, or can I get a handheld? You can't hear me. Oh, no. oh Tom, like ugh, project. <laughs> But if we, maybe if we could get a handheld, we could pass it. But we'll, we'll, we'll try. He's going to use his best stage play voice next, and we'll see if it's better. And if not, we'll, we'll ditch this, and we'll just pass the mic. Um, I'll yell. Pretend, I'll yell. pretend it's fourth grade, middle school. Yeah. You're giving a presentation, and we'll go from there. Um, before we delve deeper into the minutia of what companies are looking for, I want to do, do a little quick check-in with the influencers and talk about Probably, I would guess the number one question would be, it would be it for me at least if I were just starting out, was what was that first, it doesn't even have to be big, it could be meaningful experience for you where you feel like you broke in, you made this connection with the company and they were asking you to be a face for whatever, for a product, for a brand or whatever. You want to start, Sarah? Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm trying to think of a one specific event. I don't know if there was one specific one, but I think, you know, I started 12 years ago and, oh God, they turned it that's up. A, yeah, um, that's good, oh, thank you. <laughs> and back then, social media was very different. Um, you could post a beauty shot of something and it could actually go viral. So what happened, I'm a crochet designer, posted some, um, a, posted a crochet project and it ended up doing really well. And that kind of started um, the talk between me and some uh, yarn brands on collaborations. Uh, I actually currently have had a long-term um, contract with Spinrite Yarns, but before that, I was doing just kind of one-off projects. They would send me yarn, um, not with Spinrite, but with some other yarn brands. They would send me yarn, and I would just use it to do a project and post it, and honestly, I don't even think I was getting paid them, but I didn't even care. It was product, and it was, you know, kind of, I was working my way up. Um, I definitely want to talk more about that yeah. later, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, was Spinrite your, your first? Um, I actually had done stuff with Lion Brand before them. Um, so I'm they found think, you yeah. on Instagram, and they approached you. I think it was more Facebook, but now, yeah, Instagram oh, is so yeah. is so heavy. Um, it was with my the social space, media. Wasn't yeah. It? Uh, no, it wasn't my face. <laughs> Hold on, wait. <laughs> What's in my space, but yeah. Um, okay. And then, uh, Amy, what about you? Uh, and I was, I mean, I've been, I was a blogger. I mean, still am actually, but that's where I started on blogger, yeah. like platform. Yeah, and actual blogger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, that's where I first started sharing. And I, I'm, it's been 15 years, so I'm having a hard time remembering even the first one. Well, who was, where was first? Just something but that it stands was, out for you. It, doesn't it was just me. learning to have the courage to approach like for me it was a fabric company and build a relationship like reach out like hey I'm I'm writing this um, I was contributing to a design mom and I'm gonna have these audience can I I'd love to feature your fabric can I reach and just reaching out like kind of just having the courage and that in fact I just it's with Lisa Alexander here with Moda and um, 
I just told her the other day, like, thanks for believing in me when you had no idea who I was. And so, yeah. So, but back then, did you have to find an email address and reach out? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, for me, and, uh, for me, that's the biggest change now is that you can just DM and say, who do I contact? Like, yeah. that is such a gift. Yeah. It's also a curse because there's 11 people that can get you, that can now reach out, but there's not the barriers there. There's no barriers except for ourselves, right? It, what we put on ourselves. So that's, that's to me really exciting. All we need is QR code now. All we need is QR code, <laughs> yep. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what brands are looking for First, let's talk about what they're looking, what you're looking for when you're looking for to create these relationships. But as a second part of that, what does a what does a successful partnership look like once you once you you know what you're looking for? But what does the end game look like for you so that you have gotten this goal has been met? Um, I think what we're looking for. Um the most is probably a way to showcase our product in a way that we don't already do that. Mm -hmm. um, so for us, you know, we have a really robust marketing team. We have really robust social media on our own. Um, we don't need someone to come in and replicate that and make it a real clean. So our brand is very clean, white background kind of look. Um, we're looking to partner with people that take our product and use it in the amazing ways it can be used, but outside the box of what we're already doing. So that's the primary goal when we're looking for influencer partners. Um, and then from a long-term relationship standpoint, it's how then that product specifically that they're using from us then evolves and almost becomes a part of their brand. Mm -hmm. And so going from that, hey, I'm just taking this, this thing that you gave me, making it really cool to my style, and then how prog that progresses over the years to almost where uh, we're almost developing product and product stories together at that point. And then that's when we move into like a licensed designer relationship or something like that. That would be the end goal. And Tom, what about you? Yeah, you know, in our industry, can people hear me now? Maybe pull, no, no, maybe. pull your, pull your oh. mic. It might just be the... What is it? Yeah, there, there you go. go. There you go. Yeah. It was folded over. It was right. folded over. There we go. We're yeah. here. Anyway, in our industry, um, we do a lot of uh, new products yearly. Um, so one of our... Tell people, I'm sure everybody on the face of this yeah. convention floor knows deco, deco art, and I'm going to have you do this too. But yeah. tell a little yeah, bit about your company so that if there's anybody out here that wants to work with you, they know exactly what yes. to Yes, so we're a paint manufacturer, and we've been in the arts and crafts industry for uh, 35, 40 years. Um, and we've branched out into different channels, um, DIY, hard, hardware, and, and fine art as well. Um, so in, our, in the craft industry, um, it's real important that newness, innovation, every mm -hmm. year, we're challenged with that. Um, so we've been using our uh, influencer uh, group to uh, get the brand awareness out for new products, um, because that's the most difficult thing in our industry. Uh, when you're in larger stores, uh, they don't necessarily do the marketing in-store uh, that's needed. Um, so uh, we we have to utilize that network of artists that we have to help promote and and, and bring awareness to new products. Um, that's probably the primary uh, reason. But we use our network of influencers and artists for many different things. And you know, so we it depends on on uh, you know we'll set a parameter for whatever we're doing. If it's at a campaign, an influencer campaign. Uh, what our parameters are, um, it's pretty well spelled out before we begin the campaign. And, um, you know, the great thing about uh, today versus 30 years ago is it's very measurable. Um, you can look at the results and, um, you know, that's very helpful from a marketing standpoint. That puts so much more pressure on the creators. Like, I, like when I started, it was a my first big, I had a bunch of other, like, smaller deals, but my first big was with what became Spin Right, but started as Karen. Does anybody remember Karen Yarns? And I was there, I can't remember what they, celebrity spokesperson, something like that. But it was about like, we just want that, then I was a young mom, that young mom vibe, and it was about the like community and the good feelings. There wasn't a measurable, like, I like that. <laughs> like, it's just about good feelings. And now it's like, how many followers do you have on Insta? Like. At where where are you at with TikTok? Like like it's just there's such a different. It's great for businesses, but it is it's added a level to creators 
it's really had to fill a part of the space, I think, that we used to hold just for being creative, you know? Yeah, but, but, but to jump in on that, so, you know, we do look at the numbers, but there is an engagement is as important as the overall numbers. Yeah. So, um, and especially when you're dealing with budgets, um, you don't necessarily always go for the huge, um, the huge uh, influencer. Um, so, you know, uh, and, and we've brought some along that were very talented. We've noticed their talent um, and uh, through our platform and theirs have grown their, their, their reach and their exposure. So, you know, engagement is, is as important as just the raw numbers. So that's something that, you know, we learned early on that that's, that's important. Well, let's talk a little bit about engagement. Um, I know for, I always use the adage of, because I know it, that can be very intimidating for people thinking that they don't have this huge audience, but I use the adage that I have a 112,000 people following me on Facebook, but it is my 2,000 people who are in, I own a business called Yarnye. It's my 2,000 people that are in that private Facebook group that I actually make money off of. So it's not, it's not, especially now with how algorithms have gotten crazy, the iOS update was crazy for us. So, so take that with you is that if you have 500 people that will buy that, that's so much more valuable than if you are broadcasting to 500,000 people and people are like, oh cool. Yeah. You know? So let's talk, I would love to talk to both of the influencers about engagement, about how knowing that, if at all, does that affect how you present your everything that you're creating for a particular brand? Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I definitely feel like, well, I think we talked about this before, COVID changed a lot of things because yeah. we went from doing a lot of kind of in-person and working with these brands face-to-face -to, -face to, well, everything's very, everyone kind of flooded the internet, the algorithms keep changing and evolving, short form video, um, so now, at me as a, a content creator and an online influencer, I really have to focus on those posts and those videos and creating that so I am getting, still getting the engagement that I was maybe just from, you know, a still shot photo um, and making, you know, the brand happy. But the brands have changed the way they're doing things too. I mean, sometimes I get hired just to do one TikTok or one one Instagram post, or even just post in my stories, because sometimes that will give you the engagement that everyone mutually is kind of looking for. It How is a one-off worth it for a brand? Um, I mean, for us, I think it's it's when usually we do that kind of thing when we're launching a specific product. So we'll have uh, people on our design team that are focused on our breadth of product, but then say we're launching a new tool. So. Um, my company manufactures die cutting machines primarily and uh, things that go with paper crafting. So we have these big ticket items, these big tools, and when we do a launch like that, uh, we find it very helpful to have, instead of our six design team members just focus on it for a couple weeks, to have like 15 or 20 different. So it appears like on Instagram or TikTok that like everyone's talking about you it. You have a street team. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that's all about goals, what your goal is. It's, to, it's about to, you want it to look like it is like, you know, a mass crowd. Like it's the talk of the town. Like Got every what time yeah. you turn around, yeah. you see this tool. It's like a flash mm -hmm. mob of right. yep. product yeah. uh, placement. That's amazing. So Amy, what, a, what, um, what about you? What are your, has there been anything that has changed in the way that you present your content now that that engagement, now that we all even know the word engagement yeah. other than, yeah. you know. I, uh, I think for me, um, I've learned to like you're saying, like finding your core, who's responding and where are they responding, and that's where I invest my energy. And so for me, it's become a newsletter. Has an email newsletter has become my gold mine. That's where, as opposed to like Instagram, not. I mean, I, I keep it up, but not as much. Did everybody as, hear that the newsletter? This is this is something that came up again on a tr in a trends workshop I just was at. That's still that's still the number way one way to get engagement, yeah. even with yeah. all of the other stuff. So it's really yeah, easy to right. ditch that. And I'm I definitely did not have my newsletter where it needed to be until recently. That's important too. So. And and I would say um, to be upfront with when you're working with a brand or a, a store or um, to say here's where my here's where my strengths are. I, if someone came and said, could you make a TikTok video? I'd be like, I don't even have TikTok. So no, I wouldn't be your person. But there are other people that that's their strength and that's yeah. their engaged yeah. audience. Absolutely. So probably you've already, you're already doing this and you're finding 
the influencers that have their different niche strengths. Well, that's and working. And yeah. Then, but also as the influencer being upfront about that. Like I had someone reach out of an Instagram com campaign and was like, well, I'd be happy to do that. But here's these two other ways are I have a yeah. much more engaged audience. So I, you might want me to do that instead. So is yeah. that let's talk a little bit about that then. Um, what comes first, the platform or the influencer for our brands? Is it is this? When you're looking at a product, or, or do you think, okay, we have got to hit it hard on TikTok? Or do you look at an influencer and see that they are stronger on Facebook or Instagram, and so you're just going to go that route? Check it. <laughs> um, well, we, we figured out really where our audience is, and, and so we focus there, um, our energy, most of our energy there. but. You know, if we want to attract maybe a younger crowd or something like that, we'll, you know, we'll look at TikTok or who's who's uh, doing something there that aligns with what we're trying to do. But um, you know, we we pay pretty close attention to what's going on, on online with in our category, so uh, we have a good idea of who who we're talking to. And when we first started, you know, back in 2010, I think is when we really got ramped up on this. Um, you know, we were having to reach out and talk people into working with us. And then after a while, the network built out, up and people were coming to us and, hey, we'd like to, you know, so that was that was a nice change. And and so we really, we, we spent a lot of time paying attention to what's going on online and who's doing what, because, you know, we don't want to just hire somebody who does a certain type of craft that doesn't use paint and all of a sudden does a post for us just because they want to get you know they want some revenue on it so you know just the uh, it's not authentic um, it doesn't work for what we're trying to do so you know we have to pay close attention to what's going on so you don't find you wouldn't find value in tapping into a different audience who wouldn't have considered no I, I'm not saying that but uh, and you know and then but that would be really a strategic move for us right. to do that and, and have a certain purpose but uh, but we also understand where our core is and we definitely need content and uh, for that, for that core. So, for our collective influencers or or would be influencers, how important is it to brands for everyone to be on all of the things, like to have a strong following on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook? Um, I think for us, we would look for someone that had a strong following at like three out of five platforms. Oh, oh that's something like that. Maybe two would be okay. Yeah. Um, but for us, it's all about the consumer demographic. Um, so we want to play in all, like we, we still do a lot on Facebook, even though Facebook is a little bit of more of a dated social media platform at this point. Yeah. Um, our demographic, our core demographic used to be uh, 45 to 65, um, primarily female. Um, over the past probably three years that has shifted, our core demographic now is 25 to 45 yeah. with a rising percent of male. Um, so, so that's just keeping all those Facebook, things in Instagram mind. Instagram difference. Like yeah, that, and so that's why you yeah. want to, you still want to recognize that other part of the demographic. But as you're moving forward and becoming forward thinking, it's really important to identify people that aren't traditional crafters necessarily, but they're really, they are really strong on TikTok or whatever. And it's like, how does what they're doing translate into craft? Um, so I think it's a combination. I think you really just have to. It is the platform, but it is also if you're going to go into a platform that's not your forte, how do you play on the strengths of that? that influencer. So it's not a non-starter if somebody has like a super strong following on Instagram, but they do not tick nor talk. Right, right. right. Okay, it's not. all right. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about, like, let's get down to it. I would love, um, Sarah and Amy, if you would talk about how do you approach brands? I know you've all been approached too, but let's, right. let's turn it. Well, actually, either way, how do you make yourself approachable? or how do you approach brands that you want to work with? Either one, you do you. Yeah, I do. Go ahead. Um, I mean, first of all, I think we're in the right place for this right now. Um, having these kind of personal connections and having brands and um, you know, individual businesses, designers, um, people who are you know, trying to sell their product all together. Um, when, I guess when I was getting started, yeah, I just, you know, you just kind of make yourself available and... But what does that mean? It, what does make yourself so available? Basically have a good presence online and maybe reach out to them and say, hey, so for instance, as a yarn designer, 
okay, I have an idea to make a cute, a cute fox. Maybe this yarn company will send me this, or would they be interested in sponsoring me? Maybe the stuffing. I've worked with um, Fairfield Polyfill mm -hmm. crew there, you know, to do that. And then that just kind of starts a conversation and a, and a way for us to get to know each other. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's just kind of how it how it actually did get started for me, um, and then so it kind of evolved. So you started with product and then evolved product, into yes. influencer. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Amy, what about? Yeah, I was going to say that like, similar. Like use products that you love, right? And then you have you're like showing like, no, I genuinely use this yeah. and I love it and I enjoy it. It's very authentic, like you're saying, mm -hmm. and and then reaching out to um, a company Somebody and that and that in person events product. are such a great opportunity. Yeah. Like I, I feel like almost all my connections that really became launch pads were meeting someone in person. If going, can, I know, and I feel like we've forgotten like that. I mean, you mentioned, uh, Sarah mentioned how COVID changed everything. And maybe, yeah. maybe we should take just a minute to talk about how the effect that COVID had on the influencer brand relationship and the relationship with the, with the audience, with the followers. Um, does anybody want to speak on that? I mean, I think we began to rely a lot more heavily on influencers during COVID. Um, we also saw, I think, before consumers, for us at least, were kind of just going through uh, different influencers, different videos, and kind of just watching here or there. And during COVID, they became like, very loyal to certain ones. So we found people almost building like a fan base around themselves a little bit more than we saw before. Mm. Um, because they would chime in, you know, you're stuck at home alone and you look forward to every Friday <laughs> that person's doing a YouTube Live or whatever it is. Um, so you got these very loyal followings that happened during COVID. And, and we saw it, we, it's continuing, it hasn't, that hasn't stopped. Do you feel like that has been beneficial or problematic when it comes to, you know, before it was live events all the time and you had demo, people demoing and actually like their hands in the, you know, in the proverbial like product, you know, and so now you're depending on um, the virtual aspect of it. Is that better or worse? I mean, but they can click through and get it. Um, I think we thought it was, it was better until we started going back in person. And then when yeah. you see people put hands on your product and they're like, oh, I didn't know it actually did this, a, a core thing that that product does, yeah. you realize there is a little bit of a disconnect. Mm. So I think there's, you need to have in-person I mean, I think that's, we can say that about us as humans too. Right. Like we're all used to doing everything on Zoom and there is a little bit of a disconnect. You come to something like this and right now this is, there aren't many of these anymore. There are less. You remember, oh yeah, it's actually good to see a person in person. Yeah, yeah. It really is. It's been five years for me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fascinating. Fascinating. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about. We're not very good about talking about money in our industry, and I think that that's something that we need to change. And I want to talk about a little, a little bit about something that that both Amy and Sarah mentioned, and that was working for product. And I want to talk about product versus. Uh, financial compensation and where where you all stand on it um, it's not black and white I don't believe but I would love but I also want to make sure that we honor that artists should be paid creators should be paid but it means something different to everybody so I would love if if you would speak a little bit about yeah you know for me I don't mind doing stuff just for, some of these products are actually very expensive and it's helpful to me to actually get them for free. But um, that's important. Like yeah. it's, you know, working for a serger is different than working for, you know, like a pad of paper, you know? Like, yeah. And it's not to say that you shouldn't, if you're just starting out and you're creating that relationship that will grow as well, long as it's saying, clear. Yeah. Like I'd love to do this this first time yeah. for just product. product. Yeah. And then we hopefully can talk about a broader relationship. Exactly, and I think that's kind of how it starts and that's how it evolves, absolutely. And we also talked about kind of the importance of having that in writing mm -hmm. as going forward in one. contracts or, I mean, at least somewhere in writing, um, you know, maybe if it's a smaller even thing. Even if it's an email. Yeah, yeah, even if it's an email, you have to have that written down because you want um, the expectations on both sides of it yeah. to align. And I think that's just kind of how you have to do it. But um, yeah, kind of yeah. that's the evolution. And Amy, that's yeah, that, I agree. I are? think clarity yeah. makes a big difference mm -hmm. for, on both sides. Like you mm -hmm. said, that's a really great point. Um, and also, I mean, I mean, you probably see this as well. Like when I when I was first getting started, I, w I was more I loved working in it for exchange for product because again, like sometimes just like the 
for me to make a quilt. The fabric's not a, inexpensive, and it yeah. was great, and it, and it was a win-win, I feel like. Yeah. Um, but there are some, uh, I've also worked for 15 years really hard to build a loyal following and audience that trusts me, and, and so at some point there is a shift where a product isn't going to mean as much to me. Like, I, I'm, I'm to the point, like, I can go buy the products I want, but I, I love building a relationship yeah. with someone to work with, but at some point you're also paying, and, I, and you acknowledge this already, Tom, like, if someone's built a really large following, at some point you, you do need to compensate well, for the work that, that they, the years of experience they've been in. Yeah. Yeah. And, and companies, I think now, I think it's been the Wild West, we're still in it, but the Wild West of marketing for the past at least decade, and we're not through it yet, but as it's becoming a little bit more definable, I think companies have gotten better at not just saying, hey, like, how about some exposure? Um, I've don't. noticed something just at this event yeah. where, um, like, uh, notions or products that, for my industry, where in the past it would have been like, hey, we'll send you this product and will you talk about it? A lot more of them are doing affiliate programs, which is a great incentive to me as the person sharing, because yeah. if I, I know my audience will love this and probably buy it, and so if there's a tie, a connection to, yeah what I'm contributing and also making a percentage of that revenue. It's really motivating. I've noticed more, more doing that, which I think is really awesome. And, and that doesn't get overwhelming mm -hmm. as an influencer to have 7,000 products with links. Like how does that move the needle for you? Because you can't talk about all of them at, at I think once. authenticity, again, it has to come back to authenticity. Like well, is this I, something I would actually use I or am I just shopping? Oh, like, time. Like yeah. do, you, do you, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, that was good. Um, I mean, do you only do that with products that you know that you will loop back again and again and talk about versus there are, I'm just using this today. Like, does that make sense yeah, for you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, th I think it would have to be a product you'd be using use over and over again. And yeah, not every product's for your every business. You're going to definitely have to, yeah, pick and choose and know your audience and know, yeah, be authentic. What's going to work for yourself um, and something that you would personally use? I, hard, I, I don't think I've ever promoted something that I didn't personally love. Right. And I think that's very important yeah. to kind yeah. of, you know, have that. I don't um, promote Swiffers, even yeah. though I probably use one, but I just, I keep my audience in that niche. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about, I want to make sure to have time for questions, but um, I would be remiss if I did not hear from Taylor and Tom about how, um, how creatives can approach a brand. Um, what's meaningful? Are you looking for a full like PowerPoint presentation? Is a quick DM with a link to, you know, a feed enough? Like what, what is the, the most meaningful way that a creator can reach out to you? Um, I think for us, um, honestly, a DM to start, that kind of thing. But not a DM, here's a link, check me out. More of a, hey, love your product, can we talk further? Can we get on a Zoom together? Can right. we do something like that? So kind of it, organic relationship growth is really important in, in these relationships, so it needs to be more than a link, but it doesn't need to be a presentation by any means. Your, your, your platform is your presentation. Right, your platform's your presentation. So. And, and when you just send a link to someone, you're asking them to do work for you right. already, <laughs> which is kind of ballsy if you think about it. It's yeah, like if, if they don't know you. Yep. So that's great. So you're open to setting meeting or having somebody on your team set a meeting yeah, or absolutely. whatever. Yeah, Tom, yeah. what about you? Yeah, I'd love to tell you that we have some scientific strategic way that we do this but it's it's not it's really crazy um, and random how we meet people and so I think that it's um, it happens in many different ways I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking of you know talking about this and um, one of the more successful influencers we work with um, we came to uh, work with her because our purchasing director was following her for several years and she's kept saying, oh, you know, you ought to check this person out, check this person out. So we finally did and uh, reached out to her. She became a, uh, an influencer for us and, and really moves the needle on, uh, on, on new products. But, you know, we're like, oh, she works great. So then we're start, hey, use this product, use this product. And she's like, well, you know, that doesn't really make sense for me. Yeah. So, you know, we have to uh, bring it back a little and say, you know, that, she was right and you know we need to be careful of that but you know we from a marketing standpoint oh she's working great Let, let's have her do this and this but it didn't work for what she does and so we backed off that and we we we, we pitch products to her and say hey what do you think about this is this something you'd use and if she says no that's really not mine so we'll how about this one you know and we'll go that route with her but 
So, you know, you never know. Things like this, people come up and we meet them or they know somebody who we know and uh, we follow a lot of people online before we even reach out to them, just, you know, because we like what they're doing. We think that it works for what we're, uh, what we're trying to promote. Um, so you just never know. So it sounds like the bottom line is like, you ask and you answer. Like it really has become that, that simple. Um, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I want to make sure that we have enough time to answer questions if there's a mic out there. Um, yep, it's coming. It's coming. Um, sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, I know I've run into a lot of <clears throat> a lot of uh, situations where a brand seems to think that. Um, they are doing me a favor by giving me a product that costs them two dollars to make mm -hmm. and allowing me to then share it and When I explain to them that there is a fee involved for my time of doing that and my audience and everything I Get very indignant responses to why a Product that costs them two dollars should be enough payment even though it doesn't pay my mortgage so how do you guys deal with, how do you find the companies, especially within like the yarn industries, that are actually understanding that we hold value, that we are doing, we are the one doing them a favor by advertising for them? First of all, I think everybody, everybody knows their own business themselves, and so what works for one business might not work for another. I think straight up, those are not the right companies right. to work with, so just... Like, yeah. don't waste the right. energy, don't put that, like, that's just, that's not it. You have to go in with intention um, because the right fit will be the right fit. And that, and it's not always about the companies, especially the indie companies. Nobody's got money right now. So, yeah. so they're trying to get what they can get. Yeah. And if yeah. it doesn't I mean, work I, for you, it doesn't work. But I, 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 I would echo that as a brand, too. I'm sorry? Small companies I will work for for product because I understand that. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. I get. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, Please. I just think those companies that you would take product from would be kind of a mutually beneficial and something that you personally wanted. Yeah, if someone's trying to offer you something that, uh, that sounds like it's a bad deal, it's not going to work out, but also be confident in yourself and your business and show them everything that you have to offer. And I think sometimes that can get lost just you know, be sure you're saying that. Be sure you're promoting yourself yeah. and, and being confident about it. Um, and I found that that um, kind of helps show your value. And, and also don't burn the bridges. You can say like, yeah. I totally understand that doesn't work for my business model. If th something changes, please keep me in mind. Just, you know, because they might be learning. They may not know, you know, or they might be trying to jerk you yeah. around. Like you don't know, but like keep it positive. Go ahead. I have a store and have been approached by several influencers for who requested free product in, in exchange. They'll promote me. And I submitted, I gave them free product. I was like, okay, fine, here's the terms that I would like. And all of them have not followed through and have not done anything with it, um, leaving me feeling really burned. But I feel like a contract seems too formal and excessive, but also I don't want to keep putting myself out there like this. So you can do a contract, and in fact, are, are you all Craft Industry Alliance members? There's, okay, you should do that. There, there's so many resources, but there's an, there's an actual like template for a one-pager for stuff like this. Um, I don't think it's ever a bad idea to have, to have a quick, it doesn't have to be like, you don't have to involve a bunch of attorneys. It doesn't have to be a 10-page, you know, you don't have to get into force majeure. Like we, it, like, but it just makes sense. It makes, and it also makes it seem more legit. Like just on the, um, also as a second note, like you're working with artists and unfortunately sometimes that can mean some flakiness. And so you just have to know, know that going in. But if you have, if, if they make a commitment, if there's a, make them sign something. Like we have to adult, right? You know, do you have any? Oh yeah, I think I've signed contracts for everything now. And it's not even me sending, it's, yeah, the, the brands are even, if someone wants, sometimes someone will ask me to like feature something that I made a couple years ago in a magazine, there's still a contract for that. Just, I, 
Uh, yeah, it's just, I, I don't know, more legality or just like you said, you don't want something to go wrong. Um, and I it, think it's important. It's and like it can two be very paragraphs. Easy. Yeah, two paragraphs, exactly. It doesn't go longer than a page. Yeah, yeah. And you're, you are a strong, smart, you know, successful business owner. Like, you should have a contract. Yeah. Like, it's okay. It's okay to ask for that. They're asking you for money, you know, so, like, do that. Yeah, that's good advice. Are there any other questions? You want to pass? Yeah. Okay, so as a brand who has been actively looking for influencers and affiliates, we've been trying to build an affiliate program. Can you put the mic just a oh, little? Oh, yeah, sorry. There we go. There we go. Ooh. Perfect. Ooh, hot <laughs> mic. Uh -huh. um, as a brand that has been actively trying to build an affiliate program and to um, reach out to influencers, um, in, I, I find that it's it seems very unusual in our industry within the the yarn community particular particularly to find people who are familiar or you know whatever um, but I would be really interested to hear what types of paid um, paid things you have done because I am more than happy to pay for your time and your effort and your work but um, I'm finding a lot of people don't necessarily have even an option for me to be able to pay to to do that you want you're wanting like a menu to yeah, pick up I, yeah i would love to know what you I have mean, done and what right? options people maybe are even out there other than you know hey i send you product or hey i you know i give like, you an affiliate link or what so what like, in return can we do with the yarn for yeah. you as you're saying okay yeah absolutely yeah i mean i so i'm a pattern designer so mostly all of my paid stuff is designing patterns for either my website and featuring the yarn or for that brand's website. Um, and then they, I give it off to them and they feature it there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, it's a good point because I'm sure there's many other ways to be, you know, doing a campaign and, and promoting um, the product. Well, it's a good thing to think about, yeah. Well, and that's interesting as a, as a certainly for yarn, because yeah. um, I could see, you know, oh, I could pay you to design a pattern for me or something mm -hmm. like that. That's a straight transaction. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking about, you know, Sizzix or whatever, where you have, um, I'm a notions company, and so if you have a, a physical product that people will be using, and, you know, how, how does that how does that work out? How has it how has it looked? I, I think I think where we're at right now, I mean I've kind of always done this, but I think building I call it a menu, but whatever mm -hmm. is important for a company and you can say like for this price point you'll get a mention on my podcast, I'll do one social, I'll do XYZ, or it can be like you want now we have to get really finite because unfortunately all of the different places have different aspect ratio like requirements, which means shooting multiple times. So you have to get, like, if you want a long form tutorial, which is what we used to always have to do, like a long form, this is how you make it, build step outs, whatever, it's this price, but now a lot of people want a 15 second tutorial, which is really just like, do, 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 finish. Like that, that takes just as, almost as much time to, to, okay. to make. So if you have a menu that's like, if you want one Instagram reel, um, a YouTube video, a, you know, a still shot, like fully laid out product, that's this price. If you want, you know, you can ask for that. Um, oh my gosh, as a brand, if you had that, I would love you forever. Yeah, no, I mean. <laughs> that's such a good, you, you good it's insight. okay to yeah. ask, for, as a company, it's okay to ask influencers, can you pre please provide us with um, price points for, but you have to know what you're asking for. Like what, does your brand benefit most for the, from having like YouTube content, like a long form video? Does, are you, it depends on what you're looking for. So if you can say for a one off, if we do a bundle of three, if we do um, a combination of TikTok and whatever, um, go, ask for that and say, please provide me with, with price points for those each bullet point. And that's a good reminder as a, as a influencer to, to, to be like, be more like, be, be specific about what we yeah, can do. Or yeah. What, yeah. We have yeah. to know deliverables too. Because and what we would charge. Like I, that's each, something that's taken yeah. a lot of courage for me to get to that point. Yeah, it is. And now yeah. I, but I've been, I've, I've appreciated brands that reach out and say we'd like to pay you and then I'm, I'm willing to negotiate depending on the, but I'm, I'm grateful when a 
brand reaches out and, and is, recognizes that right away. Like, I'm, I'm happy to pay for content. It makes me excited to, yeah, to talk to them. Right I think now. we have time for one more question before we close. So uh, my name is Stephanie Hackney. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing for Hobbs Batting. So anybody in the quilting industry may know who we are. Um, and yes. <laughs> I just want to share for people that are especially just starting out, the best way you can get me to look at your work is to tag me in your content. And it's amazing how many times I see amazing content. And I comment on everything. It doesn't matter if you tag me or not. And then I'll, I'll say to them, oh, this is just amazing. I love, oh, well, I only use your batting. But they've never once mentioned us. And so we could have been working together for a year. People do not think, tag everybody. Yeah, yeah. tag What's every company you use. I completely okay. agree with that. We, yeah. we see new, we find new makers and things all the time. Just be, And it has to be not an at, but tagging the actual photo or reel. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it goes to our DMs. I mean, that's 100%. Yeah, so that, so oh, that pops up yeah. in my feed. Mm -hmm. Did everybody right hear away. that and get that? Yeah. yeah, so it's instead of just in your caption going at Sizzix or at whatever, actually tagging the photo or tagging the reel so it goes to our DMs. That is 100% yeah. the best That's way for us to see. That's a good hot tip. Right yeah. Be because That's when good. we're busy, you know, I mean, I run sales, but I'm also marketing, and I don't have a team of people. So when I'm busy and I'm just scrolling through really quick, the stuff that pops up as, you know, flagging me that we've been mentioned, those are the ones that get my attention first. Um, but I also want to mention that for the influencers, Sometimes we can provide you things outside of monetary compensation, but that may also lead to huge deals. So oftentimes I will find somebody that I'm working with and then I will think they're a great fit for so-and-so who I have a really good brand relationship with. And I will say, you need this person using your thread or your fabric or whatever it might be or I get them a machine or I pay for their way to quilt market or I promote their book mm -hmm. right and those are things where I'm not laying out money but I'm giving you connections yeah. that are going to get mm -hmm. you exactly what you want to grow your brand that's a great insight all right well thank you so much I want to give a just a quick second I know you want to promote something well Let's I know I was just, just like one, just one quick <laughs> I mean, before they kick us out okay, new well. book I have a new book coming out. This one you guys, some of you may recognize, it's Crochet Cute Critters. And then I have a new one coming out, Crochet Cute Forest Friends. And my little mascot here, the fox, is with me. So anyway, thank you for letting me say that. <laughs> I own Yarnier. It's yarnier.com. It is curated monthly boxes, quarterly boxes, clubs, community. Check it out. And I also have a new booklet out called Embroider Knit. Embroider Knit Knitwear. Amy? You can find me at Diary of a Quilter. That's what you got. Okay. Is that, do you have, do you have um, a... I, I just want to say that if there are any smaller brands out there, I mean, we're a pretty big brand in the paper craft side of the industry, and if anyone wants any kind of advice or on how to work with influencers, we're more, happy, ha more than happy to that's talk. That's huge. Do that. Yeah, yeah so... That's mm -hmm. Do you have a product you want to shout out? No, I mean, just our website, Sizzix.com, is where you'll find our, all of our paper crafting product, and if anyone also has um, any soft craft product that you think works well with paper craft, we'd love to talk to you as well. Perfect. Tom? Uh, just say that we have a. Can you hear? Sort of. Okay. Say you have. We have a booth uh, over here. We're showing some of our fabric uh, products. Um, so come by. We're demoing. So love to talk to you. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.